horrifying chain of events unfolds near the Danforth. A drive-by shooting leads to a multi-vehicle crash on the busy roadway. Good evening. The victim suffered critical injuries and is recovering in hospital tonight. He was in a vehicle when he was shot by someone in another vehicle. The violence playing on a popular Friday night strip and a neighborhood still recovering from a deadly mass shooting last summer. Our Miranda Hill is live at Danforth and Chester. Miranda, this is where the victim ended up, but the violence started many blocks away. That's right, Andrea. Police are calling this a brazen shooting. It started near Castle Frank Station, moving here to Chester and Danforth, where you can still see debris on the ground here from where the drive-by ended in a collision. Just moments after being shot while driving, a man stumbled out of the smashed-up car and onto the busy Danforth, where people were spending their Friday night. Yeah, there, was, there was blood coming from his mouth, there was blood on his neck, his clothes were covered in blood, and he was saying that he was shot in the face. The victim was rushed to St. Mike's in critical condition. Police confirmed he suffered a gunshot wound to his face. He is expected to survive. His injuries are serious and life-altering, but um, he will survive this. Police say the victim was in his car near Castle Frank Station, when people in another vehicle opened fire at around 10 o'clock last night. The two cars continued eastbound along the Danforth before colliding with a third vehicle near Chester Avenue. Don Doom Nancy Song was working when the crash happened right in front of her restaurant. He was really, really uh, in shock. Like, uh, uh, he was bleeding and his car was like uh, smashed, like completely the front one. Police are now searching for three male suspects. They were in the white car and fled the area on foot, heading south. Even though police believe the shooting happened near Castle Frank Station, the fact that the victim and the suspects ended up here on the Danforth is bringing up bad memories for those who live and work in the area. Oh my God, here we go again. Last night's drive-by comes less than a year since multiple people were shot and two were killed on the Danforth. That shooting taking place not far from where Levi LeCompte works. We had just already went through a, a big thing like this. Uh, even more extreme, actually, last year. And it's like, it just, it, it really bothered me because this is a community, this is a neighborhood, this is, this is the Danforth. Things aren't supposed to happen in, in family-knit communities. And because this drive-by happened over such a large area, police believe a number of people may have witnessed it. They're asking them to contact police, especially if they have dash cam video. Reporting live on the Danforth, I'm Miranda Anthesel. Nick, we'll send it over to you. Okay, thank you, Miranda. CTV Scott Lightfoot is live in Brampton tonight, where two women are spending their Mother's Day weekend launching an effort to get guns off the streets. Scott. Well, Nick, the women say they felt they needed to take action when Brampton City Council decided not to fund a gun buyback program. And now they're asking residents here to step up in order to help make this community safer. We were wondering if it's okay if we could put up a sign in, uh, in your window. There are two Brampton women. As mothers, we want a safer community for our families. With one common goal. The goal is to get as many guns as we can off the streets. And to do so, they're putting out a reward. We are uh, offering incentives to get unwanted, unlicensed firearms off the streets within the community. Peel Police are in the midst of their annual gun amnesty program where people can turn in unwanted or unlicensed firearms without fear of charge. In April of 2018, we had the gun amnesty program and we seized 34 firearms, 8 uh, edged weapons, and 80 pounds of ammunition. With their amnesty, they do bring in guns, but they haven't um, yielded a significant number of firearms through just the amnesty. So for me, I'm thinking when you add an incentive like Toronto had done back in 2000, you, you will get more people wanting to come out and, and turn in unwanted firearms. So Councillor Charmaine Williams introduced a motion to create a gun buyback program through Brampton City Council. That motion was defeated. The women say they're inspired by the success of Toronto's gun buyback program, which paid participants $350 for every handgun turned in or $200 for every long gun turned in, money that came from the city. One is their minimum, but the pair are hoping to get as many as 50 firearms turned in, fundraising to raise $5,000 to be dispensed in $100 per gun rewards.
we're not trying to take the legal gun owners' guns away. We want to reach out to people who are unlicensed, unregistered firearms to um, dispose of them in a way that makes them feel safe. The pair say neither has personally been impacted by gun violence, but that far too many families in this area have, and they're hoping their initiative will change that. For Mother's Day, our gift would be to have a safer community for all families, for all Brampton families. We want to see as many guns come off the streets as possible. More than 1,200 guns were turned into Toronto Police during the beginning of the buyback program there. If you want more information about how you can donate or how you can receive the money if you've turned in a weapon, you can check out the website unloadyourgun.com. The women say the money will be given out in the form of prepaid credit cards, which will be given out to people once they can produce a receipt from Peel Police to show that they have, in fact, turned over their firearms. Point live in Brampton. I'm Scott Life. Andrea, back to you. Thank you, Scott. Still ahead, a community concerned after this week's blaze at York Memorial Collegiate, there are a lot of questions about what will happen and if the school will be rebuilt. So today, community members started the search for answers. Well, a cool but mostly dry day out there, but will the weather hold this evening? Let's check in now with Dana for a look at the current conditions. What do you say, Dana? Hey, Nick. Well, the weather will hold out for the evening hours, but it is very hit and miss over the next 24 hours. Right now, it's 11 degrees, and yes, we have clouded over. This is all due in part to another system making its way yet again into southern Ontario. Here are the clouds over the GTA right now, and the temperature holds steady at 11 degrees all throughout southern Ontario. 11 degrees in Oakville, 11 in Hamilton, 11 to Niagara Falls, and up to the Barrie area. Also, 11 degrees in Cl Cloudy. Over to Oshawa, the temperature sits at 10, 12 in Vaughan, and comfortable and sitting at 11 in the Muskoka region. Right now, here in the city, the temperature sits at 11 with mostly cloudy conditions with very light winds from the southeast. Tonight, the temperature dips to 7, and again, we have cloudy conditions. We have some rain moving in, and I have your Mother's Day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Andrea. Thank you, Dana. The devastating fire at a historic high school in the city has a lot of people concerned about its future. The Ontario Fire Marshal is still investigating what sparked the inferno at the school earlier this week. And with so many unanswered questions, a meeting was held today to try to find some answers. It is a physical structure. Dozens of concerned community members and York Memorial grads met for two and a half hours this afternoon discussing the future of the school after a six-alarm blaze destroyed much of the 90-year-old building. The biggest concern? That the school will be torn down to make way for development. Can you give us that assurance? Uh, right today, 100%. The trustee for the area, Chris Tonks, heard that question several times. A lot of people are speculating, given the location of the land, of what it's worth. But I can tell you that my commitment is rebuilding York Memorial at that site. Kathy DeMauro graduated from York Memorial more than 30 years ago and is visibly upset by what's happened. But did the trustee's remarks reassure her? Absolutely. But I hope that they follow through. To keep up the pressure, the community group is also launching a petition which will go to the Premier and Minister of Education. To commit to investing in uh, our education, investing in rebuilding York Memorial. The mayor wasn't at today's meeting, but he also wants to see the school rebuilt. I think that as time goes on and everybody gets a full scope of what needs to be done, uh, you know, that there's a reason to be positive that we will do something to make sure that the glory of that very important place is uh, restored. And in the parking lot next to the school, former students have set up a drop-off point where people are dropping off supplies for students so they have enough to finish off the year. One of the organizers is encouraged by the response. It's been good. We've had a lot of people come out, a lot of past alumni from all years, people from like the 1980s who graduated and then people who, all the way up until 2015, 2016 who have come. But students graduating this year will be the last graduating class until the school is rebuilt. And York Memorial students will be going to George Harvey Collegiate starting Monday. It's just down the road. A meeting for parents to understand what's happening and how the last several weeks of the school year. That is set for Tuesday evening at 7 in the George Harvey Auditorium. And a gas leak caused some disruptions on a busy downtown street today. Police say a contractor struck a gas line at Queen and Denison Avenue around 9 this morning. Toronto Fire responded to the scene. Several businesses were closed and some residents were forced from their homes. Crews were able to cap the leak and activity in the area returned to normal a short time later. 
In the wake of Crown prosecutors staying a breach of trust charge against Vice Admiral Mark Norman related to a shipbuilding contract, Conservative leader Andrew Scheer is pledging to take politics out of Canada's military procurement process if elected in October. In an interview set to air tomorrow on CTV's Question Period, Scheer said he would like to see opposition parties brought into the procurement process at an early point so partisan disputes over military supply projects don't add further delays to the process. His comments also follow an apparent backtrack from the Liberal government on fighter jet replacements. Lockheed Martin will now be allowed to submit their F-35 jets for consideration after saying they would not do so in the 2015 campaign. Unionized employees in the federal public service could be headed for a strike after walking away from contract talks this week. The Public Service Alliance of Canada says the government offered yearly pay increases that fall short of member demands. PSAC has also refused to accept a settlement from Ottawa that would see workers receive five extra days of paid leave over four years in compensation for troubles with the Phoenix pay system. The clock is now ticking on a months-long review of the bargaining process, which could put members in a position for a legal strike vote in the fall. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his family are in Chicago this weekend to see his mother, Margaret Trudeau, in her one-woman show about her life. The performance is taking place as part of the Second City's Wellness Week, which includes workshops and seminars on mental illness. Margaret Trudeau has been vocal, a vocal advocate for mental health and has been candid about her own struggles with bipolar disorder as an author, speaker, and now a performer. Do you know what prepares you for the mental hospital? Being the Prime Minister's wife. The life that I had as a 23-year-old as the, as the Prime Minister's wife was, when I look back on it, wow, was that fun, exciting, a dream come true. But it was also because it was the beginning of my mental illness. And the show is called Certain Women of, a of an Age. And the Second City describes the show as a candid conversation that sees Trudeau tell her own unique story through her own words. A security guard has been killed after a group of gunmen stormed a five-star five hotel in western Pakistan. Security forces curtained off the Pearl Continental Hotel in the city of Gwadar after at least four armed men entered the building. The hotel is reportedly popular with tourists and business visitors. A senior security official says all of the attackers are now dead. A daring French-led mission in Burkina Faso has ended with the rescue of two French tourists and the surprise discovery of two more Western hostages. CTV's Vanessa Lee has the details. Two French citizens are now back on home soil. Their president meeting them at the airport after they were rescued in what is being described as an extremely complex military operation in which two French soldiers were killed. Firstly, all of our thoughts are with the families of the soldiers who lost their lives to free us from this hell. We want to offer our condolences, he says. The men were kidnapped from Penjari National Park in the West African country of Benin. Their guide was found dead. American intelligence helped to locate the tourists in neighboring Burkina Faso, where 20 French forces carried out a daring raid. They were surprised to find not just two hostages, but four. An American woman in her 60s and a Korean woman as well. Both were abducted separately almost a month ago. Places where safaris are conducted are very remote. They can be dangerous. There can be crime. There can be terrorism. So when people go on these vacations, they need to understand that this is not like going to Disneyland. The rescue happened in the same region where Quebecer Edith Play went missing last December. Human Rights Watch says she and her Italian friend were abducted and taken to Mali. Global Affairs is advising Canadians to avoid non-essential travel to Burkina Faso due to the threat of terrorism, adding many regions are prone to illegal roadblocks and carjacking. Vanessa Lee, CTV News, Montreal. The World Health Organization is warning the Ebola virus could spread further in Congo if violent attacks on health teams continue. Recent attacks halted Ebola response activities for five days because of security concerns. Just this past week, a team was attacked as they buried an Ebola victim. The world's second biggest Ebola outbreak has killed more than a thousand people in eastern Congo. A WHO spokesperson said high transmission rates in recent we weeks raised the risk of the disease spreading throughout the country. There was a chaos today in Hong Kong's legislature as lawmakers started fighting over controversial amendments to the territory's extradition law. 
At least one person had to be taken from the chamber on a gurney following the clashes, which saw legislators grappling with each other between tables and chairs. The law in question has sparked outrage from pro-democracy politicians in Hong Kong. It would make it easier to send suspects to mainland China, where it is feared they could face vague charges and unfair trials. One day after House Democrats in Washington issued a subpoena for President Trump's tax returns and Trump is standing by his refusal to provide them to Congress. The subpoenas come from the House, and Way, House Ways and Means Committee Chair Richard Neal following a refusal by Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin to provide Trump's returns. Now that's despite a federal law saying the IRS shall furnish tax records at the chairman's request, setting up a likely court battle. Trump tweeting today that voters didn't care about his refusal to release his tax records in 2016 and the issue can be part of the 2020 campaign. Parents in San Francisco have set up a GoFundMe page for a teacher who was forced to pay for her own substitute when she took medical leave to battle breast cancer. She's wonderful. She's a beautiful, lovely, great teacher. She's one of the best teachers, so it's terrible. The dilemma is a result of a state policy that gives California teachers 10 sick days a year. If they need more, they have to pay for their replacements out of pocket. The GoFundMe page has now raised enough to foot the teacher's bill. She asked to remain anonymous. A high-stakes rescue to tell you about in British Columbia after two gray whales beached themselves in Boundary Bay. A mother whale and her calf were spotted stranded in shallow waters in the low tide Friday afternoon. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans sent a crew in to monitor the situation, and a team from the Vancouver Aquarium was also on standby. Eventually, once the tide came back in, the two were able to float again, and with some guidance, they were nudged back into deeper waters. A community center named after a well-known Canadian boxer had its grand opening today in the West End. The George Chavalo Community Center is a new 7,000 square foot facility in the Junction Triangle. It's set to be a public space for community meetings and events. The site will be operated by the Christie Ossington Neighborhood Center and is owned by the city. Mayor John Tory was on hand to celebrate the opening, but that's not all. <laughs> Mm, the man himself, George Chavalo, stopped by for the opening to meet with fans and sign a few autographs. The five-time Canadian heavyweight champion has been hailed as a local hero for his work to raise awareness on substance abuse. And the center is, of course, named in his honor. The Toronto Raptors are just over 24 hours away from the tip-off of a deciding playoff game. Members of the team heading the court for practice this afternoon ahead of Game 7 against the Philadelphia 76ers. This is, as the cliche goes, a do-or-die game. The winner advances to the Eastern Conference Finals. Every playoff game is, you know, you come in nervous or uh, with some anticipation. Um, you know, just ready to play, so just go out and play. Um, can't let your nerves get the best of you. you just go play basketball. Game sevens are, are what you play for, what you work for. Um, you know, it's the, one of the best games of, you know, your career and kind of the playoffs. You get to a game seven, so we know how hard it's going to be. And for me, it's, you know, uh, it's kind of like go out there, guns are blazing, and play hard. It doesn't surprise me that we're here, and we just got to prepare and go play. Game 7 is set for tomorrow night at 7 at the Scotiabank Arena. And you can bet Jurassic Park will be packed with fans cheering the team on. Andrea. Thank you, Nick. Toronto FC battled their Philadelphia counterparts this afternoon at BMO Field. And we'll either be Seema or Pozuelo here. Pozuelo! Alejandro Pozuelo tied it up for Toronto on a free kick in the 51st minute. However, Philly would go on to respond, putting them up 2-1. to one. That would be the final score with TFC now losing two in a row. They'll play again on Wednesday against D.C. United here at home. With water levels rising again in many parts of the Ottawa Valley region, some much-needed help arrived today. The Canadian Armed Forces moved into Pembroke after a state of emergency was declared. CTV's Mike Arcelides was there. Katie and Stefan, water levels have risen overnight once again here in the state of emergency in the city of Pembroke. Residents right now keeping their kids inside their homes on a beautiful spring day. They have their boat houses and their tree houses underwater, with flooding only getting worse. Pembroke's call for help answered. Making sure people are okay, critical infrastructure like the you know, water treatment plants, sewage treatment plants, things of that nature are, are protected. The military rolling in, 
sandbagging Pembroke's water treatment plant where floodwaters drown parks and Angela Bergeron Street. They're distressed here. Yes, very much so. We all are. We, uh, we are thankful to get the help with the sandbags. The Bergeron's home is more than 30 meters from the shoreline. They built this wall after 2017's flood. From the, from the tree? 100 feet of shore, usually of sand. Yeah. That retaining wall is underwater. Yes, oh, yeah. We're, yeah, it didn't, not high enough. The Bergerons are some of the lucky ones living here on the river. The Ministry of Natural Resources with crews here for the last two days trying to pump water out of their neighbor's basement. Very, very scary. They, uh, their septic's flooded. Their insurance company called with more bad news. In the middle of the flood, they cancelled their insurance on us. All the ramifications that have occurred this year, I think, people can take a look at and say, OK, let's start preparing now. Because does this mean every two years we're going to have to go through a flood? For some, the damage has already been done. We knock on wood, we don't need it, but it's just a uh, kick in the you-know-where at the wrong time. Until city officials can pinpoint exactly when the water reaches that peak level, the agony continues for residents here, wondering when all this water will stop rising and when it'll go away. Mike Arslides, CTV News. Hi, everybody. I'm Dana Levinson. Happy weekend. I hope you had a chance to enjoy the few solid hours of sunshine today. It is clouded over now. And yes, there is more rain in the forecast. But Mother's Day is not a complete wash. We'll see a bit of sun tomorrow. The day starts out nice, but it doesn't end that way. And what a pretty bouquet of flowers. Hint, hint. If any of my children are watching, weather details are up next. Stay with us. It's do or die for the Raptors as they face the Sixers for the final game of the series and possibly the season. Monday on Toronto's number one morning show, we'll have live reaction from the streets following the decisive match, plus breaking news, weather, and traffic on CP24 Breakfast, where Toronto gets its everything every morning. Our enemy doesn't tire. Doesn't stop. Doesn't feel.
Walmart price test. This peanut butter is from Walmart. This one's from... Can this customer tell the difference in price? I don't like crust. Mm-hmm. I don't like crust. Gotta be the same. Same peanut butter, lower price. Guaranteed unbeatable. Closed captioning of this CP24 program is brought to you by Best Buy. Find all the top smart appliance brands in store and online at Best Buy. We finally have a nice day, and I had a lot of things to do inside, but look, there's boats out in yeah, the water. But you're going to be bailing out those boats with all the rain coming, I think, Dana. I know. There's going to be a lot of rain. But let's yeah. talk about the nice stuff first. Okay, hey, Nick? There, let's, yeah. yeah, let's Focus talk. on the positive. <laughs> let's start with the good stuff first, and then we'll get to all the negative stuff, the rain, the much cooler than it should be temperatures. You know, it should be 18 degrees this time of year, and the temperature hit 13 at 1 o'clock today, and it did not stay there for very long. So yes, it was a little bit on the chilly side, but check out the day in the East End. Lots of sunshine for parts of the day. To celebrate its 90th birthday, Cosburn Park Lawn Bowling Club celebrates its opening day today in the heart of Old East York. There are 200 members, and yes, of all ages, and every one of them would like to see spring just get here and stay here, at least for a while. Luckily for these folks today, they did have the sunshine for most of their game today. The temperature has fallen now to 11, and we're looking at some fluctuation in the temperature over the next couple of hours. We're seeing it go from 11 to 10, back to 11 to 13 even, and then start to fall steadily over the evening hours. All of this is part and parcel due to another system that moves in, pushes out our high pressure, which gave us the sunshine. The cause of cloud cover now, and also the temperature will be dipping yet again below seasonal for Mother's Day. Here's how it plays out for us. Here goes that ridge of high pressure. It moves out to the east. We have that system moving in with a cold front tomorrow and some rain moves in as well as we break down the next 24 hours. If you have plans for yourself and for your mom, if you're celebrating moms tomorrow, this is how it looks. Clouds tonight. Tomorrow, actually before tomorrow, we get a hit of some rain overnight, which means it could be a little bit wet when we start our day tomorrow morning, but we won't see the, really the intense of this rain, the, all of it moving in until much later in the day. Most of the rain stays south of the Toronto area and is centered around Hamilton and Niagara around 11.30 or noon and then we start to see the clouds later in the day and more rain around 5.30 or so if you're planning on barbecuing it looks like a wet evening. Check this out. Around 12.30 in the morning or so on Monday it starts to rain and then it continues to rain and rain and rain again throughout Monday pretty much a 24-hour event. Right now, Environment Canada is calling between 10 and 15 millimeters of rain for the city. It looks like it could be a lot more if we see the sustained downpours, particularly in the evening hours on Monday night. Tonight, we dip down to 7 with cloud cover, 5 in Peterborough, 5 up in Aurelia, and over to the Hamilton a area, the temperature dips to 7 degrees as well. A daytime high tomorrow of just 10 degrees. Once again, we should be at 18, so we are below seasonal for Mother's day. Seven degrees for Monday. That rain throughout the day continuing right through into the evening. More rain on Tuesday with a high of 13. Could see some sunshine late in the day. Again, another system moves in on Wednesday with more rain in the forecast and a high of just 15. We'll be back to some sunshine on Thursday and above seasonal finally on Friday to end off our work week. And then the temperature dips again below seasonal by next Saturday. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dana. People stood together today for a very special event. This was the 18th annual Megan's Walk. The fundraiser is for pediatric brain tumor research, and this morning participants embarked on a five-kilometer walk from Fort York to Sick Kids Hospital. The walk is in memory of Megan Babinek, who died from a cancerous brain tumor in 2001 at the age of five. Now, since it began, the event has raised five and a half million dollars and it attracts people of all ages and families impacted by pediatric brain tumors. This is so important to us. One, to honor Maddie's memory. She died almost five years ago of an inoperable brain tumor. And this is very important to us to honor her memory and raise money 
to support research for pediatric brain tumors. When Meg was sick, I didn't realize brain tumors were a number one cause of death in, in children and adolescents up to the age of 20. So I knew something needed to be done to get this statistic under control. But being a former teacher, I also knew there was such power in encouraging students and children to uh, share their gifts and give back. Participants walked to Sick Kids Hospital where they surrounded the facility, forming a giant hug called the Circle of Hope. Many waved to patients and their families inside who were watching from the windows above. A major fundraising event takes over parts of the city tomorrow. More than 22,000 runners will run down Young Street for the annual Sporting Life 10K. It helps raise money for Camp Ooch, a camp for children with cancer. The race starts at 7.30 a.m. and Young at Davisville this year. The Young Street will be closed between Edmonton and Davisville starting at 4.30. Now, there are various closures along Richmond, Adelaide, Peter, and Front Street to Fort York. For a detailed list, head to our website, CTV News Toronto. And a note for TTC riders this weekend, a portion of Line 1 between St. Clair West and Union Stations is closed for continued installation of the automatic train control signaling system. Shuttle buses are running through the area. Line 1 set to reopen Monday morning. Tomorrow is, of course, a big day for moms everywhere as they are pampered for Mother's Day. Today is, of course, today, St. Lawrence Market was a popular place to pick up gifts and supplies for the occasion. Many shoppers targeted the flower shop while others were buying baked goods. We spoke to both moms and their families about what would make the day perfect. Currently, we're giving Mama a break, and uh, we're down here having breakfast, and we're about to get some ingredients for breakfast tomorrow. I love coming to the St. Lawrence Market. Now I'd like to be with my family, perhaps go to a nice spa and enjoy enjoy that. And a nice dinner at home, though not in the restaurants because it's so crowded. That's all I want. I do a lot at home. So for me, I would really like to have my two boys put a little more effort into doing, you know, cleaning up after dinner and stuff because they, they tend to leave it for me. <laughs> no! Hey, flower shop operators say sales for Mother's Day is busier than Valentine's Day. In Red Deer, Alberta, a mom has six reasons to be thankful. She's overcome staggering odds by giving birth to three sets of twins. Wow. CTV's Tyson Fedor has their story. They're happiest when they're cozy together. <laughs> Meet the newest additions to the Armstrong family, babies Maverick and Blakely. At two and a half weeks old, they are the third set of fraternal twins born to Pam and Taylor. I wouldn't say that we set out to have six. It's kind of, if you can believe it, it's just kind of normal for us. The eldest set of twins, Parker and Emery, are nine years old. Brinley and Adelie are five. It's been quite the journey <laughs> from the first set to the third set. Maverick and Blakely were born April 20th at 37 weeks at the Red Deer Hospital. Doctors told the family the odds of having three sets of non-identical twins were 500,000 to one. I think that we've shocked a lot of people. Parker was hoping for a brother. He says in a house ruled by girls, an instant bond has already formed with Maverick. Pulling him mostly. You like to spend time snuggling with him? Yes. <laughs> we are both done! However, all the siblings do enjoy spending time together. Play memory, play babies, jump on the trampoline. The latest double birth has made things a little more expensive. The family moved from their townhouse to a bigger five-bedroom home. Throw to Parker. Hard as you can. We're thankful that we have six healthy children and look forward to raising them. Pam is a full-time stay-at-home mom. She was aware of the possibility of giving birth to multiple sets of twins. I had a little bit of an idea what I was getting myself into being a labor and delivery nurse. Asked if there are plans for a fourth set of twins, the Armstrongs say they are happy with three. Tyson Fedor, CTV News, Red Deer. Congratulations. <laughs> Just ahead, a recap of tonight's headlines. Plus, supervising your sleep. The radar is going to be sending the signals. Um, it's bouncing off your chest. Keeping an eye on vital signs, the wireless device, and the University of Waterloo researchers behind a revolutionary new test. Tonight, a return to form for an Olympic snowboarder. Uh, that's going to be a big challenge, uh, but I like big challenge. Max Perot eyes the slopes just months after undergoing chemo treatment for cancer. Later on CTV National News.
years of my life in a cave like an animal. I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> She's gone. Trevor! The Enemy Within, new Sunday, only on CTV. Then stream anytime. It's Jeep season. Time to break free. Get dirty. Leave the comfort zone behind. Get into a Jeep Wrangler, Motor Trends 2019 SUV of the Year, or Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most luxurious vehicle in its class. It's Jeep season, so get out there and do your thing, whatever that is. Get up to 15% off MSRP for up to $10,650 in total discounts. This May, color to conquer and do something fun for a serious cause. Join the thousands of Canadians who will be coloring their hair to raise funds for world-leading cancer research. I'm Lindsay, and I'm coloring my hair to conquer cancer. How will you color your hair? Maybe magenta, maybe rose gold, maybe ruby red. Be bold, choose your hair color, fundraise, and challenge others to color to conquer. Register today at colortoconquer.ca. This is the family who booked the trip, which led to new adventures and turned moments into memories. With more options for your Florida vacation than any other travel site, Expedia has everything you need to go. Introducing Treddy Condos, coming soon to Wilson Heights. The perfect union of modern, smart design. A community designed for the way people really live. Scandinavian design with a Toronto address. Steps to Wilson Subway and minutes from Yorkdale. Two bedrooms from the mid-400s. Register now at trettycondos.com. That's trettycondos.com. Over a century ago, there was only one way to make a Schneider's hot dog. We would follow our secret recipe with its original blend of seven spices. We would only use our premium cuts of meat and smoke them with four kinds of hardwood. And that's how we still do it today. Because it's never just a hot dog. I understand vanadium is a byproduct. We're looking for a way to take that and convert it into a way that can store energy on a more massive level. It means that we would have delivered this renewable energy not in spite of the oil sands, but precisely because of it. That could really change change the world. Our families were surprised by what we do. You might be too. Learn how else Canada's energy is changing at energytomorrow.ca. at Mervish.com. Get this sporty new Ram 1500 Express. 4x4 quad cab. Or step up to the special edition Black Express. Black grill. Black matching. 20 inch wheels. It's a perfect time for a new Ram. Right now, get 25% off MSRP with up to $17,000 in total discounts. We have developing news out of Newark Region this hour. There's a heavy police presence in Richmond Hill. Officials say they're investigating a hazardous materials call. Now, this is a live shot from Lorette Lane. York Regional Police have not provided any other details about the nature of the material in question, but road and pedestrian traffic is being restricted in the area. We'll have updates throughout the evening. And updating the rest of tonight's top stories now, a terrifying series of events last night near the Danforth as a drive-by shooting led to a multi-vehicle crash on the busy roadway. Police say the male victim was in his car near Castle Frank Station when shots were fired from another vehicle at around 10 o'clock last night. The two cars then hit a third vehicle near Chester Avenue and the victim stumbled out onto the street. Yeah, there, was, there was blood coming from his mouth, there was blood on his neck, his clothes were covered in blood and he was saying that he was shot in the face. 
The victim was rushed to St. Mike's in critical condition with a gunshot wound to the face. He is expected to survive. Police have not provided any information on potential suspects. Two Brampton women are spending their Mother's Day weekend launching an effort to get guns off the streets. Peel police are carrying out their annual gun amnesty program, but after an effort to turn that into a gun buyback program was defeated at Brampton City Council, the moms decided to raise funds to offer compensation to those who want to give up their firearms in hopes of reducing gun violence in their community. And after fire devastated York Memorial Collegiate Institute, community members and alumni gathered this afternoon to discuss the building's future. Many at the meeting expressed worries that the site could be torn down to make way for development. Trustees said that will not happen, but the community group is also launching a petition asking the province to invest in rebuilding the school. And our digital team is also working on those stories and others making news tonight. Visit ctvnewstoronto.ca for all the latest developments. Nick. Well, it's common for adults to complain about not getting enough sleep and of course it can lead to serious conditions like sleep apnea. It's diagnosed in a sleep clinic where patients vital signs are monitored through the night but researchers at the University of Waterloo have discovered a new wireless radar system to monitor sleep activity. CTV's Leanne Evans has more. Sleep apnea is usually detected when patients are hooked up to a machine that looks like this. The radar is going to be sending the signals um, it's bouncing off your chest. But a new radar system created by researchers at the University of Waterloo could change the way vital signs are monitored. It's a set of frequencies that you send and you wait till you receive them and you compare the received signal to the transmitted signal. A complex process, completely wireless. The radar is mounted in the ceiling. It looks through the person in the body. Measuring heart and breathing rates. We take that signal and we do some analysis on that signal to uh, get some metrics out of it. It completely changes how we interpret and you know, how we, we see our patients. And it doesn't only have to be used at a clinic. A technology like this could be used at home to give you a, like a more comprehensive view of what's actually happening. But Researchers collected data from more than 50 volunteers as they slept in a model long-term care home. They hope the technology will be able to help physicians in the near future. One of the challenges that we have in healthcare is the ability to monitor our patients beyond what we see in the clinic. And it's not only for sleep apnea. The options could be endless with this device. Researchers are exploring the use of the technology to monitor activity levels and falls, as well as neurodegenerative diseases. We have recently showcased that we can fit the radar system in a smartwatch platform and then use that to look through the skin to monitor glucose levels. It may be small, but it could have a huge impact on health care. Leanne Evans, CTV News. The United Nations has reached a landmark agreement to reduce the pollution caused by plastic waste. Nearly every country's vote vowed now to monitor and track developments of plastic waste outside their borders. Now, the United States did not sign on to the agreement. The deal affects products used in a broad array of industries, including healthcare, technology, aerospace, and fashion, as well as food and beverages. Around 100 million tons of garbage is currently floating in the world's oceans. Authorities in Texas say at least 9,000 barrels of a gasoline-based product have leaked into a shipping channel in the port of Houston after two barges collided. The collision capsized one of the barges and damaged the other. Efforts are now underway to contain the spill. Environmental tests have found no threat to the public and efforts are underway to clean up the spilled product. Some homeowners like having doorbell cameras for security purposes, but sometimes well, they can also capture some pretty interesting natural phenomena. This meteor was caught on the doorbell camera of a residence in Riverwood, Illinois. The space oddity caused, is caused by particles of sand and rock coming out of space and, of course, burning up in a bright flash as they hit the friction of the Earth's atmosphere, making for a pretty cool surprise. Mm. A massive science fair of sorts took over a street at the U of T today. This is Toronto's Science Rendezvous Festival, the one-day family-friendly event celebrates science, technology, engineering, art, and math. It took place on St. George Street with close to 100 hands-on demonstration shows and exhibits. It's a popular place for ice skating during the winter, but activities are continuing at the Bentway under the Gardner Expressway. Today was the launch of the Bentway spring and summer season. It opened with a touring public art exhibition looking at new monuments for new cities. And despite the chilly weather, people did gather under the highway for the free day-long public event. And organizers say there will be more in the weeks ahead.
Whether you're interested in recreation, we'll be doing weekly yoga and tai chi on site. Uh, if you're interested in convening and listening to some music, we have a great partnership going with Exclaim Magazine. So we'll be doing weekly concerts on site uh, and operating a beer garden uh, on Sundays. I'm there. Uh, you can find the 1.75 kilometer Bentway Trail under the Gardener from Strawn Avenue to just east of Bathurst Street. Beer Garden, you got his attention. Well, you can treat mom with a visit to the Bentway tonight on Let's Talk Toronto. We're talking Mother's Day and other events around the city with Chum 1045's Ashley Greco. And a warning, you'll need a big appetite. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Talk Toronto. Ashley Graham and myself are at the cafeteria. Greco. Greco. <laughs> Ashley Graham is uh, the actress. She's a freaking actress. Super well, yes, well, I see what I see. We're in the cafeteria at 299 Queen, Bell Headquarters, for a reason. We will explain why in just a moment. But first of all, in case you didn't know, tomorrow is Mother's Day. According to a survey, most moms want quality time with the family. And that is actually what I asked for, quality time. But don't forget the flowers. <laughs> the flowers are important. A really great idea is to take mom to see the cherry blossoms in Toronto. Oh, they are beautiful. in full bloom right now. I know everyone rushes to High Park. I tried to do it last year. <laughs> what a nightmare. Unsuccessful. <laughs> it's a little chaotic. Don't forget, there are 15 different locations for cherry blossoms in Toronto. You've got places like, you know, Centennial Park, um, Center Island, Woodbine, uh, Trinity Bellwoods, mm -hmm. Cherry Street. So take advantage of all of the locations that the cherry blossoms are blooming this weekend. Such a great place to take mom pictures. A lot of moms uh, would like to have a cocktail for Mother's Day because, you know, they've worked Hard, yep. They want to put their feet up and relax. And do we have the cocktail to end all cocktails? Yes. Yeah. Well, so my first favorite day is Mother's Day, and then my second favorite day is National Caesar Day. Who knew there was such a thing? I know. <laughs> May 16th is just around the corner on Thursday. I have been eyeing a place. It's called Swan Davy. They're in Vancouver, and they are known for their Caesars. <laughs> the checkmate. Sells for $60. You've got everything on there from a uh, Cornish game hen. You've got onion rings. You've got, uh, you know, a hot dog, wings, and even dessert. They are opening up their very first location. So their location will be called Score on King, 107 King Street East. And how great is it? They're opening on National Caesar Day. So if you want a place to enjoy a Caesar on National Caesar Day, Score on King is where you need to be. I see some barbecue sauce on here. It yes. is also barbecue season that is starting uh, right now. We yes. barbecue 12 months of the year, but not a lot of people do. No, but, so but May is known as barbecue month. I didn't know that barbecue gets its own month. You're going to find a lot of cool barbecue festivals, and there is one that kicks off on Thursday. It's called the Northern Heat Rib and Craft Beer Festival. It's happening at Young Dundas Square. Okay. kicks off on Thursday, but it runs right into the long weekend. You've got 26 vendors, 15 craft beers, 12 live bands. It's going to be a really fun and exciting time in the city and a great way to celebrate Barbecue Month. For now, we're going to wrap it up for this week and uh, perhaps dig into the... Oh. Caesar. Not, Caesar not, not perhaps. We will. Cheers. Cheers. Stars Tonight is brought to you by Last Man's Bad Boy. Who's better? Nobody. Yes to barbecue month. Hi, everybody. I'm Dana Levinson. We have another cool and cloudy night ahead with a burst of rain on the horizon, too. But the forecast is not all bad for Mother's Day. The temperature falls to 7 degrees overnight, and that means it will be a chilly start to our Sunday, too. We're breaking down the next 24 hours and taking another look at this week's weather details when we return. Stick around. CTV Thursday. After a record-breaking 279 episodes, television's most watched comedy for the last 12 seasons is getting ready to go out with one big bang. The highly anticipated Big Bang Theory series finale. Thursday at 8, 9 Mountain, only on CTV. Brought to you in part by Disney's Aladdin in theaters May 23rd. It's 39th annual 24-hour sale at Don Valley, North Toyota. From Friday, 6 p.m. to Saturday, 6 p.m., cash savings up to $4,000. Harley Special, Canada's number one volume Toyota dealership. Don Valley, North Toyota, at the corner of Victoria Park. I'm Max, professional dream coach, here to help bigify your dreams. Because Lotto Max now has draws on Tuesdays and Fridays, plus even bigger jackpots. Jane, I'm Max. Uh, hi. So, what's your dream if you win Lotto Max? Uh, 
A vacation. Come on. Maximize it. A vacation home on a lake. My lake. Jane's lake. I think my work here is done. What are you talking to? With Draws Tuesdays and Fridays, you can dream to the max. Come on down to Chuck's Roadhouse Bar and Grill. With a whole herd of locations across Ontario, it's the perfect place to come for great food at better prices. We got plenty of big screen TVs, appetizers, and ice cold drafts for you sports fans to come watch the game together. Or you could get together with the family and enjoy the best deals on steak and lobster dinners in town. And don't miss Wednesday Rib Day. Only $12 for a full rack and $9 for a half rack. Chuck's Roadhouse Bar and Grill. Well, I'm not sure what you do in the office all day. I think you're working more on the environmental side of things. What I do is caribou habitat restoration, and it takes forest cover that was previously disturbed by oil and gas industry and returns it to a natural state. The future looks fairly positive. With Kristen working on the project. <laughs> Our families were surprised by what we do. You might be too. Learn how else Canada's energy is changing at energytomorrow.ca. Dear Tech, let's talk. You blaze trails. But you have the power to do so much more. Let's not just develop apps. Let's develop apps that help save lives. Let's make open source software the standard. Let's create new plastics that are highly recyclable. It's going to take input from everyone. So let's do it all together. Let's expect more from technology. Let's put smart to work. It's 39th annual 24-hour sale at Don Valley North Toyota. From Friday, 6 p.m. to Saturday, 6 p.m., cash savings up to $4,000. Harley Special, Canada's number one volume Toyota dealership. Don Valley North Toyota at the corner of Victoria Park. Closed captioning of this CP24 program is brought to you by The Shell Festival presenting The Lady Killers, a heist that goes hilariously wrong. For tickets, go to shellfest.com. I think the relationship between this government and the media is going to be a little bit different. Things are going to unfold quickly. We're going to be moving from one breaking event at a time. Colin DeMello is live at these late developments. We have to be able to think fast, act fast, and move fast in order to get everything that's happening as it unfolds. And updating you right now on that developing situation in Richmond Hill, where emergency crews are responding to hazardous materials called near Bathurst and Eglin Elgin Mills Road. And there's a heavy police presence again up on Lorat Lane. That is a residential street. Vehicle and pedestrian traffic in that area is being restricted. There's no word, though, on when this scene will clear, but this is definitely a spot to avoid if you were planning on heading out in that area in the next little while. Now, York Regional Police haven't provided us with any other details about the nature of the hazardous material in question. A Toronto woman is opening up about her mental health struggles. Yes, it comes ahead of a fundraising and awareness walk later this month. And Dana is back with her story. Mm -hmm. We are just wrapping up Mental Health Awareness Week, and I met with the co-founder of the Mental Health Walk. And she tells me the event was created because there's a need for those who are suffering. This is what depression looks like. Like, it's not out in the open like you think. We're not walking around crying. Come here. Part of Courtney Taylor's story is she has lived here in the same home since she was born. It is where she is most comfortable. Home is the safe space. Taylor remembers how she felt when the panic attack started at just five years old. There's the stomach ache, heart pounding, sweating, shaking, all of the the usual um, shortness of breath. At eight, she was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. By 13, Taylor was put on medication and recognizes how hard it must have been for her parents to watch her suffer so severely. Whatever age they are, the best place to start um, is to keep the lines of communication open and and not be afraid to ask the tough questions. Taylor has had six serious bouts of depression. Now at 36 years old, her mental health challenges continue. But she is a dedicated advocate. We're finding that by sharing our stories, it's giving people license to tell theirs. Taylor helped create mental health initiatives at her work. She volunteers tirelessly. She even wrote a book and co-founded Toronto's first ever March for Mental Health in 2017. What do we want to do? Break the silence. Taylor's goal is to live in a stigma-free society and to make sure that everyone has access to care and treatments. We need to do more than talk now. We've been talking a lot, but... On the other side of it, there's no action being done. The Mental Health Walk is on May 26th, beginning at noon at Queen's Park.
Yeah, break the silence, Bell, let's talk. It all exactly. sort of ties into that message, doesn't it? Yeah, and Courtney was telling me that the walk actually stems from Bell, let's talk, that she met the co-founder of the walk at a Bell, let's talk event. Mm -hmm. And they both felt so inspired after meeting each other that they wanted to walk, they wanted to talk, and, and they wanted to do some walking. So Talk to talk, walk Exactly. Yeah. So an incredible event, and they're expecting hundreds of people. So if you want to go out and show your support, do it on May 26th. Okay, thanks, Dana. Let's Final look at the weather now. Mm -hmm. So we have weather that's sort of good, sort of bad. It's hit or miss for the next 24 hours. So right now the temperature is sitting at 11 degrees, a little bit chilly where it should be this time of year. And the temperature sits at 11 till about midnight. And then we start to see the drop in temperature from 9 to 7 degrees. It will be mostly cloudy in the morning. And that really is when you should be getting out and doing some other day events. If you are planning on doing anything outside, it is really around the morning hours. And then we cloud over around noon and we could see some spotty and spotty showers and even some drizzle in the afternoon and then the rain starts late in the afternoon and continues from Sunday night right through until Tuesday morning. So this will be another major rain event starting tomorrow night. We could see upwards of 15 millimeters of rain, maybe even more by Tuesday. The temperature stays below seasonal all week and then finally on Friday above seasonal. Thank you, Dana. Between now and our next newscast, you can stay up to date by going to our website. And watch breaking news all day long on CP24. Of course, they'll be updating that hazardous material situation in Richmond Hill throughout the evening. I'm Nick Dixon. And I'm Andrea Case. For Dana and all of us here at CTV News, have a good night. Good night. Good night.